Last name I want to talk about. Interesting name. Name that we have not brought up yet on this podcast that really has not made much noise when it comes to the Pittsburgh Steelers at all. Makai Becton. Offensive tackle, former Jet. Believe he was a first round pick a couple of yeah, years back. Yeah, he was like a top five pick, wasn't he? Yeah, big top name. Five or top ten. Never really panned out in New York. Dealt with some injuries. Then last year it was like the you know, there there's some there's some confidence issues Aaron Rodgers was talking about, what could happen, blah, 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 blah. He's a free agent, hasn't signed anywhere. According to Pro Football Focus, he could be looking at like a one year five million dollar deal. I mean, could play both the right and the left side, has experience on both. He's only 24 years old. When it comes to the Steelers, you got to look at Dan Moore and take that into account and say, when you're looking at options, the options always have to be compared to, are they a better option than Dan Moore Jr.? You look at Makai Becton, is he a name that the Steelers could consider? And if it's not right now, do you think it's a name that they could consider after the NFL draft if they do not add a first or a second round offensive tackle in the NFL draft. Yeah, I actually really like the idea of adding Becton, especially at a year and $5 million. Like that's, yeah, why not? Like, you know, that seems kind of not necessarily a no brainer, but as at at worst, he would be insurance for Dan Moore. Like if Dan Mm -hmm. Moore really stinks or even if Becton, like if his injuries issue, if his injury issues pop up, um, like you, you've got someone like, I don't know. They're clearly very comfortable with Dan Moore, to be yeah. quite. Like it seems like they are not freaking out about me being able to get a tackle or not getting a tackle in the NFL draft. Um, so I think taking a flyer on Becton, who clearly has massive upside, former top five pick. I'm pretty sure that's that's right. Like I'm pretty sure he was like number four or something, um, or if not top ten. Like the guy has a draft pedigree. Um, he's huge. Uh, if you can just hope that he's past the the injury issues. And if he can, I don't know, stay on the field relatively consistently. Like I, I like this a lot, especially at again, a year and $5 million. Like that is nothing. Um, that is nothing for, for a guy who can play both sides of the line, who again, just at very worst, be a pretty solid backup. Um, like that, this seems like it would be a nice fit for, for Becton and for the Steelers. Like he could kind of come along a little bit slowly. Like there's not immediate pressure to, to start and be an anchor of a, of a left or right tackle. Um, I, I think it would work like, it, and if there are confidence issues, then like, you know, let's let him like rebuild it a little bit. Let's let him, yeah. you know, let him do that. And who knows, maybe he is better than Dan Moore. And maybe he leaps him on the depth chart during training camp. And we're having a different conversation. I, I think it would make a lot of sense. And I, I wouldn't hate this at all for the Steelers or for Becton. Here's what I want to talk about next. Size matters. We all know it, and it's important to remember it in times of need. I recently went to a small law firm in hopes of getting the compensation I felt I deserved. I didn't, and to this day, I still think about the money that I may have missed out on. I filled out mounds of paperwork, then waited around for what felt like forever, got phone call after phone call telling me what I did not do right in the process, and it was expensive all to get underwhelming compensation and almost zero satisfaction. Fortunately, if you ever get seriously injured and want to file a claim, you don't have to go through the same hassle I did. Instead, you can make it way easier by finding out if you have a claim in just a few clicks on your phone and working with America's biggest injury law firm with the promise of being for the people. Here comes Morgan & Morgan, today's sponsor. Morgan & Morgan has over a 1,000 attorneys working in all 50 states fighting to get their clients the money they deserve. In recent months, they've achieved verdicts for their clients, including one that is worth $26 million. That is 40 times the highest insurance offer. And they're absolutely free unless you win. I got lowballed. Don't make the same mistake I did. Fighting big companies takes a big firm, and with America's biggest injury law firm, you're ready to take on insurance companies of any size. Don't overthink it. You can start your claim in just a few clicks by following the link in our description or by going to www.forthepeople.com slash allstealers. It only takes a few minutes to find out if you have a case, and if you have, it might be worth millions. 
No, no, I agree. So he was the 11th pick in the 2020 draft. But I, I, I recall like he was the dude, you know, super young, massive human being. I, like that was just a name. Like he was, he was one of the guys coming out of coming out of that class. I agree with you. I think honestly, I think it makes if the whether the Steelers add an offensive tackle or not in the NFL draft. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think Becton might be if they add an offensive tackle in the NFL draft and that's their guy. I I still think Becton might be a better move than Dan Moore Jr. Just because he has experience playing both sides, which means he could be a swing tackle. Dan Moore could not be a swing tackle. He struggled mightily trying to play on the right side last season. I mean, he's 24 years old, so he's younger than Dan Moore Jr. One year, $5 million deal. You're not paying him much. Who cares? And you only got Dan Moore for one year, too. Why not? You know, why not replace Dan Moore with a guy who could be a starter? Possibly. Or at worst is a good quality swing tackle that you're looking at and going, why not? You know, why why not have a quality swing tackle instead of a guy who can only play the left side, who has backed your way into a corner now? Because if say say Broderick does go to the right side, our Marius Mims comes in, our Marius Mims has an injury history. What if he's not ready? What if he's, you know, not capable of playing all 17 games in an NFL season? Now you're looking at Spencer Anderson being your right tackle because Dan Moore can't play, or you're moving Broderick Jones over to the right side again. That's not what you want. I think Becton kind of makes a lot of sense for the Steelers. I would be I would be very open to that, especially for a one year five million dollar deal at this point in the offseason. Like, why not? You know, Dan, I don't think the Steelers should should attach themselves to Dan Moore in any way unless they have to, and I'm comfortable with having to if that's where you find yourself in a month. But if you if you find yourself with options, like why not why not take an option? You got one this is a one year transition year. This is all this is for the Pittsburgh Steelers, no matter what. So make it the best transition year you could come up with. And I think Becton's a better move there. Yeah. And I mean it's like it's a lottery ticket. And that's yeah. like it's this is fine. This is a fine way to to spend this money, I think, is to take a shot on a guy who, like I don't know, we like uh, we've never really seen Makai Beckton play a full season. Like at some point, I'm curious to see what a a guy with his kind of draft pedigree could could do with a full season. Um, yep. um yeah, I, I'm 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 right there with you. Like this is this is a lottery ticket. Take your chance, and this is the easiest. This is one of the easiest ways that you could take a shot like this. Um, and, and there's no way, like I, I don't know, it's rare that you get a guy with this kind of upside for this cheap you know to add to your roster and like to be able to take just a one-year flyer on him is seems like so easy and like such a i don't know not a it's kind of a no-brainer to be quite honest like i don't know I, why there aren't more teams who are like yeah we can take a shot for five million dollars like that's nothing in the grand scheme of things that's what i'm saying like if we're over here talking about like oh we'll find a place for justin simmons who cares you know you want to allocate five million dollars Go hand it to Makai. And that's the thing is I doubt like it's always less than what the estimated value is always. So if it's $5 million in a month from now, maybe it's two and a half million dollars. And at that point, dude, income, no matter what, like it doesn't Who cares if he's yeah. just bring him in to compete like that. I think that's the biggest thing here is you don't lose any money. If you just bring somebody in to compete and say, Hey, look, are you better than Dan Moore? Are you better than Spencer Anderson? Are you better than a rookie? Cool. You're 24 years old. You have an opportunity. And if you're Makai Becton, you can't be looking at this saying uh, like, oh, there's a bunch of opportunities elsewhere. Pittsburgh might be the grand. This is my best opportunity for any available offensive tackle who wants to be a starter in the NFL. Right now, it's Dan Moore Jr. And a lot of these guys got to be thinking I could probably beat out Dan Moore Jr. or play the right side or whatever. I just think I think both sides, it makes it a ton of sense for the Pittsburgh Steelers, a name that I'm shocked we have not talked about, to be quite honest with you up until this point, but a name that I think will probably gain some traction now that we move closer to the NFL draft. And now that like we're on to like tier six of free agency. So, you know, go get, go get whoever's left and, and Makai Becton, he, he would be in it. He would be a very, very interesting name for the Pittsburgh Steelers.